Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and uh, taking a look at solar activity. It's really popping up and getting more interesting. We have a sun that has three sunspots, including two. One that is actually growing, 2783. One that is huge, also that's just coming to the edge of the sun, 2785. This is what you see here. Uh, now, this is interesting because um, we're getting a almost constant flow of sunspots in the past uh, few months. That is showing that there's a lot of activity that's starting to pop up on the sun for solar cycle 25. And that's good news uh, because that means that we are going to have better propagation due to higher solar flux. Yes, of course, somebody was asking me, you know, you talk about solar activity, but is it, it, is it true that uh, high solar activity can also be bad? Well, it can be bad in another way, is that the more activity on the sun, the more chances of solar flares. Solar flares have, uh, you know, can create uh, radio blackouts. So when there's a solar flare, you could, you know, suddenly lose. If you're listening to a, a station on shortwave, for example, and you suddenly lose that station after like, you know, just a, a minute, there's kind of a big fade out and the station disappears. Uh, that could be the result if you're on the it's, it really affects only the Earth-facing side of uh, the uh, the uh, Sun-facing side of Earth. Sorry. Um, so um, if you're, um, you know, if the Sun's up and you get a fade out, complete fade out suddenly, it could be a flare, and it doesn't need to be that big. You know, even small flares can create enough of a fade out to uh, actually impact shortwave propagation. But these don't last long. In general, uh, most small flares is going to last just a few minutes. But big flares, huge flares, can actually impact for a few hours. Then the second impact, the second thing that solar flares can do, if they are facing the Earth, uh, big solar flares can actually send what we call coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. These are plasma clouds of particles from the sun that will hit the Earth's geomagnetic field and actually create geomagnetic storming. So that's also the impact. But that isn't immediate. When there's a solar flare, the time that it takes for that plasma uh, cloud of, of particles to reach the Earth can range anywhere from, you know, 12 to 18 hours and really, really big flares that send really fast moving um, particles to several days before actually it reaches the Earth and the smaller flares. So that impact is not immediate. But overall, you still want to have sunspots. You still want to have higher solar activity because you want to have that solar flux here. You see that number at 88 on the radio sun. You want that number to rise because it actually helps the layers of the ionosphere to stay more stable uh, and be a little more dense. And actually, that helps not just regular propagation, but also it will improve higher frequencies um, an example of that is 15 meters, 21 megahertz, and 13 meter band, 21 uh, megahertz of the international broadcast band have been uh, pretty active in the past few weeks, thanks to the increase in solar activity and solar flux. So it's nice to see that the sun is active, and it's cool to see that we're now really going upwards in the new solar cycle 25. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and I will share the spaceweather.com webpage in the description below the video.